Hello everyone and welcome to our new section which is called Graph Algorithms. Now before digging into the graphs, let's see what we will learn in this section. First, we will learn what is graph and why we need it. Then we will learn graph terminologies which are very helpful especially during the interviews. Then we will see how many types of graph there. Then representation of graph in our code. Then we will learn two ways of traversal which are breadth first search and depth first search. Then we will learn a sorting problem which is called topological sort. And the next topic will be a classical problem called single source short path. And we will see three ways of solving this problem which are breadth first search, Dijkstra's algorithm and Belmont Ford. And the next topic will be all pair shortest paths. And this problem will be solved in four ways using breadth first search, Dijkstra's, Belmont Ford and Floyd Warshall algorithms. Of course, we will also compare these algorithms. Then finally, we will learn how to solve minimum spanning tree problem using Prims and Kruskal algorithms. And at the end, we will conclude the section with comparison of algorithms that we have learned. So hopefully you have got an overall idea of what we are going to learn in this chapter. So let's start learning them one by one. So the first topic is what is a graph? A graph is a nonlinear data structure consists of nodes and edges. The nodes are sometimes also referred as vertices and the edges are lines or arcs that connect these two nodes in the graph. More formally, a graph can be defined as a graph consists of finite set of vertices or nodes and set of edges with connect pair of nodes. Now let's see what we mean by vertices and edges. So here, the circular objects that we show over here, which are A, D, B, K, J, E, are the vertices and the lines that connect these circular objects are the edges. So from here, you see that these are nodes or vertices and these are the edges in our graph. So hopefully with this topical graph picture, you have understood the definition of graph data structure. Now let's see why we need graph data structure. Graphs are used to solve many real life problems. Graphs are used to represent networks. The networks may include paths in a city or telephone network or circuit network. Graphs are also used in social networks like LinkedIn, Facebook. Now let's say we are given a problem called shortest path between cities. So here we have given a map of Europe to find the shortest path between cities that are mentioned over here. And these cities are connected using these paths over here, which shows the flight from one city to another city. So here you can see that from London, you have different flights to different city. Now let's say if you want to go to from London to Baku, we have different paths. So we don't have direct flight to the Baku. So to go to Baku, we can fly to Moscow, then come to Baku, or we can fly to Kiev and then come to Baku, or we can fly to Istanbul and then come to Baku. Now, as you can see, we have different paths to Baku from London. So the question is, how we identify the shortest path to Baku. So in this case, we need a data structure which handle this. So if you look at the data structures that we have learned till now, we can easily see that the only option is three data structure because three data structure has nodes and these nodes are connected with path. Now the problem with the three data structure is that we don't have cycle there. But here in this map, you can easily see that we have cycle over here. So for example, when we travel from London to Moscow, then travel to Baku and from Baku, we can travel to Istanbul and back to London. So here we have circular path over here. So this case cannot be handled in case of three because in case of three, we don't have any cycle. So the only option is graph data structure. So let's see how can we solve this problem using graph data structure. So in a typical graph, we have vertices and edges. So we can represent these cities as vertices in this graph and we can connect them with edge and the edge will be the path between these cities and we can calculate the cost of this path and set them as way. So after doing so, we can solve the problem of shortest path. Now, we are not going to solve this here because we will discuss this problem of shortest path in our upcoming lectures. Here, you just need to know that by creating the graph for these cities and paths over here, we can solve shortest problem using different algorithm. So hopefully you have understood what's a graph and why we need it. Now in the next lecture, let's see graph terminology, which are very useful when dealing with graphs. So see you in the next lecture.